what is up you guys my name is Kath welcome to my Chanel so I've been wanting to start one of those video series for a while where you talk about makeup new releases and give all your thoughts on them if you're gonna give your money to the company if you absolutely hate the product but I always sit down to film them and I just feel like it's so boring for me to just sit there and talk about the products even though I love other people's videos where they do that so today I'm gonna be doing a get ready with me while I talk about new makeup products we're gonna see how this goes let me know if you guys actually like this video style and any name suggestions for the series because I've seen a lot of cute names. I don't really want to copy anyone else's name for this style of series. Don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and I love all of my subscribers very, very much. I am starting out with the Too Faced, not Too Faced. I always do that. Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. And I'm gonna try to talk about all of the products that I use as I go along, but if I forget to mention anything, it will be in the description box down below. I always have super detailed description boxes. So I'm gonna use my Revolution Pro Foundation Drops and Liquid Highlighter for my base today, which segues us into the first makeup release. I know you're supposed to save the best for last, but this is actually probably the makeup release that I am most excited about. And that is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation. And this is the thing I'm most excited about, the Super Size Concealer. So if you guys watched my Too Faced Born This Way Concealer review, I said that I wasn't sure if I was going to buy the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer again because the tube is so small and I feel like it just dries up so quickly. Like one, I hate having to go out and repurchase something like once a month because I use it all up so quickly. Two, it just feels super, super wasteful, both of my money and of the packaging. So I am beyond excited. It's gonna be 10 bucks for 0.45 ounces of concealer, which is almost, or if not the same size as the too Faced Born This Way concealer, which is such a big bottle, I always mistake it for my BH Cosmetics foundation. And then I absolutely love Makeup Revolution's complexion products. The foundation drops and their Fast Base Foundation Stick are two of my favorite foundation formulas, and they are so affordable. I love their shade range, the shade F4, like that's what I have on right now, and I mean, it's probably my closest match out of all of my foundations. So I'm just super excited that they're releasing another foundation because I love their foundations. And if you have never tried any of their complexion products, I highly, highly recommend it. The foundation is gonna be 12 bucks and I don't believe Trend Moods page had an actual size listed on there. I'm assuming it's gonna be one ounce, but you never know. I'm so excited about this and I hope ColourPop follows suit and releases a super size no filter concealer. If they made a big version of their concealer, it would be over for every other concealer brand. I would never buy another concealer in my life. So just, this is what the foundation drops look like. I don't know about y'all, I just think that these look so nice on the skin. All right, so I'm mixing my Too Faced Born This Way concealer with my ColourPop No Filter just to get the right shade. This Too Faced shade range just does not work for me. So speaking of Too Faced, we're gonna segue into another new product. Too Faced is releasing a sugar peach wet and dry face and eye palette. And I love that they threw the eye palette part in there because we all know this is not meant to be an eye palette, this is meant to be a face palette. And the thing with that is I am so over highlighter palettes. I loved them when that first started being a thing. I always was like, oh my God, it's such a good deal. You're getting so many highlighters for the money. Like this is amazing. When else would I be able to get four Too Faced or four Anastasia highlighters for $10 each? But the thing is, no matter what your complexion is, there is always gonna be at least one shade 
in your highlighting palette that doesn't work for you. And I wish more companies would take a look at that and be like, you know what? We're not just gonna release one highlighting palette. We're gonna release a light, a medium, and a deep one, or I wish they would split it up. Split it up into highlighting duos, split it up into singles, because even though it seems like a great deal, if you can't use half of the highlighting palette, it's not gonna do you any good to have it just sitting there in your collection. The palette itself, the shades look beautiful, and I, like I said, freaking love their scented products. Like, hit me up with a peach scented highlighter, just singles, please. I'm gonna do eyeshadow next, and I haven't even thought about what eyeshadow palette I'm gonna use. Um, it's actually my birthday as I'm filming this, so I'm going out to my birthday dinner tonight. Um, if you haven't watched my birthday video, please go watch it as a birthday present to me. Um, so I'm gonna spritz my face with this Heritage Store Rose Water and Glycerin. If you have dry skin or if you just have trouble getting your makeup to not look powdery, you need this in your life. Just take a break while this dries. Okay, so I'm gonna do my eyeshadow. I'm using the Modern Renaissance and the Norvina palette. Um, I'm not gonna pop the exact shades up on the screen because that'll take two billion years. But we are going to talk about eyeshadow now. So both of the eyeshadow palettes that I'm talking about are from Urban Decay. So Urban Decay is coming out with the Elements palette and mad respect for what they were trying to do, I guess. They're trying to release a colorful eyeshadow palette, but the thing is this looks freakishly similar to the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette, first of all, which I don't own that palette. Um, I don't know why. Something about like this circular eyeshadow layout just doesn't appeal to me. Like. I don't want a cutesy eyeshadow layout. I want my eyeshadows to be laid out in the most space efficient way so I don't have a giant eyeshadow palette. So that turns me off, the fact that they sort of ripped off a smaller brand with this eyeshadow palette. And then the fact that they released this palette with only three mattes is really annoying. I think everybody has expressed that all shimmer eyeshadow palettes are not the move. There are so many more colorful shimmer shadows out there than there are colorful mattes. Like the day that someone releases a decently priced palette with lots of colorful mattes that actually blend and perform like phenomenally, <sighs> That'll be the best. Um, and then the other one that I wanna talk about is the Naked Cherry Palette, which first of all, RIP to the original Naked Palette. I never owned that one. My first eyeshadow palette ever was actually the Naked 2 Palette. I never owned the OG Naked, but I feel like that just was such a trendsetter. Anyways, back to the Naked Cherry Palette. So I'm genuinely not convinced that anyone from Urban Decay's production team has ever seen a cherry in real life. I kind of want to shoot them an email and see if they're okay. Like maybe they haven't been let out of the warehouse in a really long time and haven't been given fruits and vegetables because I don't see a single color in this palette that actually looks like something that resembles a cherry and it's a little weird because I'm assuming that it's grown-ups that work on that team. Anyways, what this palette looks like to me is like they took the shades from the Back Talk palette and the shades from the Aphrodisiac palette and just sort of smooshed them together. So I find that a little bit interesting. When the Norvina palette was announced, I made a video of like what the Norvina palette should have been or how I would have designed the Norvina palette. So I think I'm gonna do that for the Naked Cherry palette as well. because I got a lot of really great feedback on that video. So next thing that I wanna talk about is the new Juvia's Place loose highlighters, mainly because the comment section on the announcement of these highlighters had me absolutely dying of laughter because there are so many white people sitting there like oh my god none of these shades are gonna work on me because my skin is literally translucent i'm so pale and there's literally people are saying things like how are people trying to complain about shade range inclusivity and then there's a brand releasing something like this that's so obviously uninclusive and i'm sitting there thinking go buy a highlighter from one of the hundreds, hundreds of other brands that cater to your skin tone. There are white foundation mixers out there, so it's really not the same. Like there's no such thing as a like black foundation mixer where you can make your makeup darker to match your skin tones. Um, so if this one makeup brand wants to release 
some skin products that really only cater to like not even just dark skin tones like these genuinely would work on anyone who's like semi-medium like it's just not gonna work on like my skin tone or lighter chill chill about it it doesn't have to be about you all the time you're part of the problem my only real complaint about this release is that they're all gold like it would be nice to see them do some like deeper peach tone shades i don't know it could be more unique like there's plenty of gold highlighters on the market and the shades nubian and royalty one look exactly the same to me so like i don't really see why someone would need both or why they need both in the collection speaking of juvia's please and people needing to chill, <laughs> Jaclyn Hill and Morphe, their new brush set. Um, let's just say that Jaclyn Hill needs to um, Jaclyn chill. That's probably the worst joke I've ever made in my entire life. Um, this brush set is $164 and I don't know who Morphe thinks they are. I don't know what, like, goes on with Jaclyn Hill and Morphe. Like, I don't know if, like, Jaclyn sacrificed something, like, to Morphe when she was first starting her channel or something. Are we honestly expected to believe that this girl uses, like, private label brushes when she does her own makeup off camera when she probably makes more money and from one video than the average human does in an entire year. And it's okay if you want to make an affordable product that's not the highest quality in the world, that's fine. Just stop acting like it is the highest quality in the world. Okay, so layering actual glitter over these Stila Glitter and Glow eyeshadows is the best choice that I've made in my life thus far, at least since turning 20, five hours ago. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick break while I finish up this eyeshadow because uh, I need to turn my AC on. All right, I just did my under eye, inner eye highlight, and some eyeliner. All of those products will be linked down below. We're going to finish up with this last leg of product discussion. So first thing that I just am going to briefly touch on is Halo Beauty and the Kiwi Seed Booster. So <laughs> I just, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm in, <laughs> I, when I saw that Tati was releasing another bottle of vitamins that are $30 for a one month supply, I laughed because that girl got so much backlash for the first launch that like when she teased that she was going to release something new, I was like, oh cool, like it's going to be something actually skincare related like her fans wanted in the first place. And no, it's just another bottle of vitamins. Not more affordable or anything. It's just another bottle of vitamins that you're supposed to take in conjunction with the other bottle of vitamins that is also insanely expensive. <laughs> I'm an avid beauty guru chatter reader and just all of the roasts that they do of Tati for this company crack me up. I love the fact that people call her product birdseed because literally I feel like that's what it is um and it just kills me who just wakes up one day and decides if they're gonna start selling medical supplements let me know so last thing that I'm gonna talk about is fourth ray beauty so this is a skincare brand and when I first saw Trend Mood unboxing this on her story, I was like, oh, that looks so expensive. The PR package came with like a freaking rose quartz roller, all these cute little headbands, like all this fun stuff. And then I find out that this is my favorite makeup company in the whole wide world, ColourPop Cosmetics sister brand. And it's super affordable. The most expensive thing in the lineup so far is the cleansing oil and that's still $14 for a big old bottle. So this is way on my radar. I am not gonna buy this anytime soon because I have so much skincare stuff that I need to use up. But I, the fact that ColourPop is releasing, it's not ColourPop, it's not like ColourPop actually, but like it's ColourPop. Um, the fact that they're releasing a skincare line 
just warms my cold little heart. All right, y'all, makeup is done. Makeup new releases that I have something to say about, have been spoken about. Was that even a normal sentence? We are all done. So I'm gonna go take my little kitty to the vet and then go have me some birthday dinner. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you do like this video idea because I am a millennial and I need validation from the internet to know that I am doing okay in life. And that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in my next video.